I grew up as a surfer and a rugby player and traveling a lot with my family. And I was always outdoors being fit and healthy and, you know, and trying to be strong and fast and, and that kind of sporty young, young man. My anxiety came out of nowhere. Uh, the night before flying to Alaska uh, for my second attempt at traversing the Brooks Range, I had a, a very sudden and severe panic attack uh, and almost canceled my flight. I managed to pull myself through it and flew to Alaska. But over the two weeks uh, leading up to the, my expedition, I had uh, more panic attacks and a lot of anxiety. And I knew the expedition wasn't going to work out. Um, my panic attacks continued right up until uh, before my fourth uh, attempt, which was eventually successful. I was uh, cooking dinner. I felt great. And then all of a sudden I, I started getting really dizzy and nauseous. Uh, the room was spinning and, and like tight chest and had to stop what I was doing and go and lie down. And it just it felt like, I don't know, there was just so much going on and I, I couldn't handle it. And, uh, it was, it's terrifying. It's hard to, to really explain, but it's, it's such a, a tangible fear and yeah, it's just horrific. <laughs> when I returned home after my first uh, failure with the Brooks Range, I really had a lot of self-loathing. I had no one to blame but myself and I really hated myself for it. Um, and that only became worse uh, over the next two years with my second and, and third failure. And the second year, uh, about a month and a half after I'd been home, I, I got a call from a, a friend and he, he didn't know whether I was alive or not. And I realized that I'd completely shut myself away from all of my friends. And I'd basically just been in my bedroom or walking the dog. And other than that, I hadn't been talking to anyone. I hadn't been seeing anyone um, because I hated who I was. I always prided myself on, on being this mentally strong and resilient person and to have my dream taken away from me through my own frailties and an inability to overcome my anxiety and, and my fears uh, was very hard to deal with. As well as speaking to my dad, who's a psychiatrist, I saw a psychologist. Um, that was very helpful. And I also did a lot of my own personal research. I read an article about Andrew Skirka, who's one of my heroes. He did an expedition around Alaska. He suffered from anxiety for the first time in his life. And leading up to that, he'd hiked over 25,000 miles alone without ever having problems. Well, hey, you know, what, what I'm doing is, is quite terrifying and, and the top guy in the world experiences similar emotions. Um, so it's not so uh, embarrassing for me to go through them. Dealing with my panic attacks has definitely been an evolution. Running and exercising, surfing, all these physical outdoor things help me relax and clear my head. And I find that my mental health is very directly linked to my physical health. If I'm feeling really fit and strong, um, mentally I feel fit and strong. Sunlight's very important and eating healthily. I, I feel pretty terrible if I eat junk food. Um, so uh, day to day I'm a, a very healthy guy. I think there are a lot of people suffering anxiety that, that aren't ready to, to seek help or, or even admit to themselves what they are going through. And it's, it's a difficult one um, to, to help someone that doesn't want to be helped, um, but just being there for them and trying to talk to them when, when they're feeling a bit more open to a, a conversation about it and just letting them know that they're not alone and, and that you or other people have suffered similar experiences. If a friend of mine was suffering from anxiety, I would tell him that seeking professional help is, is really beneficial um, and trying to be healthy in other aspects of their life um, is also really important.